Hi, this is the Philosophical Angle Program, and I'm your host, Chris Angle. I'm the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Philosophical Equations of Economics. These books are available free for viewing at thephilosophicalangle.com. <clears throat> uh, if you like this uh, video, uh, hit the like button and subscribe, if you will. And we uh, like to have comments also in the boxes below. And the purpose of the philosophical angle is to discuss the nature of concepts and ideas in current media. And uh, what's happened here recently is uh, the military has been bought, uh, brought to Washington, D.C. And, uh, <clears throat> and as soon as they did, someone figured out that they, they were forgotten. So they didn't have a place to sleep, didn't have anything to eat. Uh, and um, so how can an administration floating in money after uh, with all the uh, stimulus packages out there uh, not even think about uh, what they need for somebody who's so important to them uh, as the Democrats uh, think that they are very important to have around and yet they don't even think of their uh, where to sleep where to go to the lavatory or what to eat or who cares. <clears throat> They're getting things in line now, but they didn't even think about it at first. So it, it leads us to the question of, do the Democrats, by their nature, look down upon the military? It would seem so. I remember Hillary kind of looking down at, her, at the military, uh, putting them in the deplorable category and and uh, we look back over history and kind of get that feeling that the Democrats don't really look upon the military with much favor whereas the conservatives do think that they are very important and look up to them and so why is that why do the Democrats cheat, uh, uh, treat the National Guard so poorly And, uh, and they treat the police poorly, too. Look at how they are anti-police here uh, uh, all throughout the United States. <clears throat> so why is that? Let's, just, let's, uh, let's look into this. But in order to do so, we need to uh, look at the nature of the left and the nature of the right. And after we do that, I think we'll discover why that is. Let's look at the uh, <clears throat> let's look at the first two divisions in between the left and the right, and it comes from the nature of of politics. Where did the uh, where did politics come from? Well, politics came from the very division in society when somebody rises. To dominate somebody else, and after and as societies grow, the the chieftains become kings and queens, and uh, and so on. And the kings and queens eventually become presidents as society develops. And so the reason uh, why the in any society that the chieftains, the the kings and the queens come to surface is we'll look to uh, St. Augustine's uh, very, uh, uh, very important principle, which is libido dominandi, which said that we have a will to dominate. And this is uh, backed up by, uh, by uh, anthropological studies uh, that we do uh, uh, always have someone who dominates and rises to the, to the top. And, and our society is, uh, and we're going to call that society the haves. And then the other side of the society are those underneath the king and queens and the nobles called the serfs, the proletariats, the have-nots, the slaves. And, uh, <clears throat> and as society grows, the nobles and the uh, uh, queens uh, need a facilitator class in order to carry out their wishes throughout uh, uh, out throughout society and in modern-day countries 
uh, the nobles and kings and queens and presidents, uh, totalitarian presidents or what have you, are replaced with government bureaucrats. And also added into the mix are the, is the top corporate management, which is needed by the haves in order to control uh, the have-nots that work for them, uh, for the company managers, uh, because the have-nots pay all the taxes. <clears throat> And in order to, uh, uh, for the kings and queens and the uh, and uh, the totalitarian presidents and elected presidents and that, um, they have to control society. And they control the uh, society in order to, uh, in order to support themselves because they are the haves. And. They do this because they believe that the nature of the serfs is inherently bad. They look upon the lower class of the serfs, the slaves, and uh, they look down upon them and they think that their heart, their nature is not good, that they are inherently bad. And some of the left believe that the have-nots are are, are bad because they not only just of a lower social class, uh, but they are also because in, inherently they have a bad heart, they have an, a, a bad nature. And it's um, thought and considered by the haves that these non-cooperative serfs, because every, every once in a while these serfs, they try to break out of their uh, of their class, the slaves try to break out the serfs, the proletariats. They try to get better for themselves because of dictum number one in life. Life's number one dictum is life wants to do that which is good for itself, and continually wanting to do that which is good for itself and its family and its uh, <clears throat> its progeny. So uh, every once in a while, a serf does break out. A proletariat breaks out, a slave breaks out and gets into the middle class and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the upper class will tolerate them because they pay taxes still. So they're, um, so, but they are, but they are, but they are to be controlled. And uh, when they're controlled, they look, they're looked down upon and, and thus there is no respect for the individual rights of the have-nots because uh, whether they're the conformist and stay in their, uh, their bottom class or whether they break out into the middle class, uh, in the eyes of the haves, uh, they are inherently bad and they need to be controlled. And so, uh, and so they are controlled and they're not allowed to get to break out from the middle class. And, uh, uh, and this necessary control of the have-nots means that there will be uh, economic and equal social justice of the have-nots, whereby everybody stays where they are in society, where, where everybody is equal in every way. And you can see this because now they're changing the, the verbiage that they use from equality to equity. So they not only want to be equal in rights, uh, which is fine, which is absolutely, which is, but, but they also want to be uh, they want equity between all individuals of the lower class. And because they are, uh, they are bad uh, and uh, uh, there is no empathy for, or, or there is no advocacy for the individual rights of the, of the lower class. And, uh, uh, and these, la these lower class people are called the deplorables. And this is really nothing but a caste system. So the haves tend, uh, the haves, the kings and the queens and, uh, and the upper echelon of society all want to maintain the social caste system that they've developed. Now, on the other hand, the have-nots. Uh, the workers, the slaves, the proletariats, uh, the, 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 the people who have nothing, who, who, who just 
uh, try to earn a living uh, as well they can uh, in, in, this, in their circumstances. These individuals seek the first dictum of life, just like the haves do, that all life seeks that which is good for it, and continually seeks that which is good for it. And these individual serfs uh, seek first and foremost equality before the law. Um, and they do so so that they may strive for the betterment of their lives. And they seek equality before the law uh, in pursuing this first dictum of life uh, by advocating and striving for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that is the essence of the the have-nots and, and really the conservative uh, and, and being on the right side of, of, the, of, the, of the political spectrum. So with that said, we can now see why the democratic left, the kings and queens of society, the haves of society, treat the soldiers poorly. And the latest case in point is what's happened in Washington, D.C. And the reason is that all the soldiers come from the serf class. They come from the proletariat, the slave class, the worker class. And they, uh, and and so they are. They start at the very bottom of the social rung uh, developed by the haves. And so they're looked upon, uh, down upon. Now they are segmented often because they have a different purpose in society, uh, to further their control of society. They need the, uh, the, uh, the 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 military. But nevertheless, since the military comes from that echelon of society, they look down upon them. They are not, the military does not create policy. All policy comes from the haves and filters down from their facilitators to the, to the army, to the military, to the police forces, and there to execute these policies but they don't make policies themselves, nor do they handle policy. And so they are continually in the lower echelon of the caste system that the haves uh, produce in, uh, in their societies. And so that's why the Democrats treat the military so poorly. They just forget about them. They're beneath them, and they are just instruments of their policies, to, to carry out their policies. If you uh, like this video, hit the like button. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time on the Philosophical Angle program.